Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Some of you may be wondering what's going on and why I'm not posting many videos at the moment. Firstly, there isn't a huge amount to film. Um, and secondly, I've been doing an awful lot of sort of research. I made a sort of snap decision, really. The decision was partly made quite a while ago when I decided to get the, the electronic drum kit. Um, I've been out of music for a long, long time and have shown little interest. I don't listen to much. I listen to the odd music video on YouTube while I'm sat there sometimes, but I haven't put a CD on to listen to for absolutely ages. And I just, I've gone away from music and I thought, well, I've got the drum kit now and I'm forcing myself, which is not a big deal, um, to play it every day. All I've got to do is try and do the same with my guitar, <laughs> which is proving a lot more difficult. <laughs> uh, but the drum kit did come with a decent set of headphones, so I could actually play my guitar through the headphones as well, because that's the problem with the electric guitar. When it goes through the guitar amp, it makes quite a noise, and these houses are They've got fragile walls. I, I don't want noise going through to neighbours. I, I, I would find it upsetting if I had to put up with it. So uh, I don't want to do that. That's why the headphones for the drum kit work fine. The headphones can now work for the guitar amp. But I thought if I'm going to get back into music, um, the object is to record, to actually set something down. Now, years and years ago, I used to have a tape deck. <laughs> so I used to record onto tape and I used to thoroughly enjoy that and at college it was used an awful lot you know I mean there were four of us got together to sort of form a um, sort of semi-acoustic folk group um, basically it had electric bass me <laughs> and three acoustic guitars and four people singing that was actually pretty good stuff and the tape deck was used to put some of that down so that we could listen back to the overall thing all those tapes and everything are lost unfortunately this is before the days when you could just chuck something on a phone or a computer and and it's automatically backed up so it's all lost you know it's all gone just memories but i thought if i'm going to start recording stuff you can't just plug stuff into a laptop and make it work. It don't go like that. Um, <laughs> there's no jack sockets on a laptop. And if there was, there probably wouldn't be software to make it work. Laptops are all geared up to USB connections. And most musical instruments don't talk via USB connections. So I've been doing a hell of a lot of research and looking stuff up and work to find out how I can join all this stuff together and not need a pilot's license to, to actually use it all because you know there is a limit to, to my techie stuff anyway so uh, long story short I've been doing a lot of work on the computer because once I decided the way to go I then had to do the research based on what I can get for how much I can afford and how far into the subject I want to go you know you can spend tens of thousands of pounds on a mixer desk for a studio I, I don't want a studio I just want the ability to record the things I've got so um, stage one was to get a decent microphone and um, I was surprised that that wasn't a lot more expensive so we're, we're going away from the little clip on mic onto the collar and that sort of thing to something a bit more professional so we've now got a decent condenser mic and um, that's got a screen, the cable came with it and uh, it's a good solid microphone. So we're looking at something sensible. Now that will sit in front of my guitar amp. It can be used for singing. It will record my acoustic guitar and it can do all those things except for it can't. Because it can't do any of that straight into the computer. And this was the bit where I was getting a bit flummoxed. I thought, well, I'm going to need a mixer, aren't I? And then I don't need a mixer. But what I do need is an audio interface. And then once you decide that's the piece of kit you need to get all of this stuff to talk to the computer, you then sort of think about, well, what about balancing? You know, what about doing... Uh, you just get 
the software on the computer to do all that. So you get a digital audio workstation on your computer, which is just a bit of software. There's loads of free ones around. I downloaded one, which is readily available, just to have a look and see what's inside, you know, what, what's on the menus, what can you do with this bit of software. And it can do lots of things that I don't even understand. <laughs> and that was just a freebie. So I've ordered just literally now. It's taken me a period of two days at looking at reviews and looking at options and keep looking in my pocket to see how much I really want to spend on this. And I thought if I get a decent audio interface, all of the stuff that I've got can go through that and come out the other end via a USB cable in a format that the computer can read via this software, at which point tracks can be mixed. You can add things in like echo or reverb um, on a guitar. You could even add, add distortion in. You can play with the sounds on the computer. So you don't need all the gadgets to do it outside the computer. I could play the guitar straight straight into the guitar amp with no effects whatsoever, record it on that microphone or direct into the um, audio interface, either way, into the computer and then add the effects in there. And one of the pieces of software even has MIDI sounds. So basically you can add instruments into your mix. Now I'm not quite sure how that works without a keyboard to get the notes, but I'm still looking at that because I haven't got a keyboard. But I may get one. You don't have to spend an awful lot of money on a keyboard just to be able to play some chords with a nice sound as filling for making a, for making a track. Just filling. It fills out the sound because it's continuous. You know, when you play a guitar, if you don't keep strumming, it goes very quiet. <laughs> Same with the drum. You hit it and the sound's gone. Well, with a keyboard, you hold the notes down and that sound stays there as long as you want it to. So it fills in all the gaps that other instruments can leave, gives a fuller sound. And I can play enough keyboards to be able to put that sort of track down with multiple sounds. So that's, that's what I've been playing about with. It's not all here yet. Um, the audio interface won't get here until next week. Um, that will then allow me, <laughs> I've then got to look and see what leads I've got and there's bound to be a shortfall there, there's got to be. I know I haven't got a um, MIDI lead at the moment, <laughs> uh, which would join the drum kit to this um, audio interface with a direct, you know, direct transfer. It's funny actually, a MIDI output and input, it doesn't transfer any sound at all. It actually transfers the digital information for something to make the sounds from. <laughs> you know, it's almost like if you go back to the old vinyl discs. There's no sound on that disc at all, just the ability to wiggle a needle around and vibrate and come up with the sounds at the other end via, you know, various means. So, uh, so I'm one cable short at the moment. Um, but the um, drum kit uh, unit and the audio interface have both got jack standard quarter inch jack sockets in and out so I might not need the MIDI interface at all even though it's available um, I can just do direct sort of um, sound transfers and um, yeah and I've got the microphone to do the other bits that you know haven't got like a, a you know like a guitar has a lead doesn't it but an acoustic acoustic guitar doesn't so that's either, you know, that's got to be recorded via the microphone. But I can even play with, I could record the acoustic guitar and actually use the microphone to actually put the sound from the acoustic guitar into the guitar amp and put effects on it. So there's lots of things you can do once you've got a decent microphone and some cables and a couple of bits of kit. Um, so we will see where we go. Still haven't got any songs yet, although thank you very much for all those who've sent me some words. There's some really interesting stuff there. Um, there's one brilliant set of words about eight foot long. I don't know how many verses that is, but it's an awful lot. The trouble is it was based on a, a tune. 
So like the tune was there in the background and the words were put to that imaginary tune, if you know what I mean. And whenever I read those words, I can't get that tune out of my head and I can't use that tune. That would be a copyright infringement. <laughs> so I got, you know. Um, but I do have a good selection of words that kind people have sent me. As I said, I'm not, not so good with the words. Um, but uh, at some point, I will start putting some stuff together. And this is just like one of those things. It's like um, all my uh, shrubs and hedging bits in the garden need cutting back. They didn't get done in the autumn because my daughter couldn't come down. And that's a job we like to share. We do that together. So it hasn't been done. And I can't get any incentive to get out there and do it. It's one of those things, if I picked the secretary up and walked out the door and cut something, I'd get a huge bush done. But I can't be bothered to go out and start. And this music stuff's exactly the same. There's a bother factor to make me do it. Now, I am playing the drums each day. Not for long. I just sit down, turn it on, put the headphones on, have a whack around, make some noise, and try and remember the things I used to do. And I know emphatically that what's going to get me back in to be able to play the drums well again is to get some tracks into that unit through the headphones. You know, so like be able to stick a CD on and play it back with the drums through my headphones. Then we're up and running because then I'm playing along with, you know, the ideas from somebody else are already there. I'm sort of copying or doing something similar. That will get me going again. Um, anyway, that, that's what I've been up to. Um, there are, there is one new Catlia open, which I'll, um, I'll, I'll stick that in the chat tomorrow, Sunday chat. And I do believe the, um, oh God, the, the, the dendro dendrobium we've all been waiting for. Um, Spectabilis. I think, anyway, uh, one of those is opening. I don't know whether it's going to be fully open by tomorrow, but it might be. So we'll have a couple of new blooms for tomorrow, but there just isn't much. There's quite a bit looking like it might do down the road, but not much that actually is. But, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have a look at some of those tomorrow. I've got more things going over than I've got, be, you know, replacements coming. But uh, it's a strange time of year because... I got an email reminding people to put their pictures into the virtual competition for February. Also right, reminding everybody that in that Orchid Society, Bournemouth Orchid Society, our spring show would be in February. And all the categories would be full of plants. Well, get some pictures and get them into the virtual competition then, because we can't have a show. I've got next to nothing so far. And if you think how many categories there would be in a normal orchid show, and they'd all have plants in there, well, where are they all then? <laughs> I mean, if I had to put a plant into a show, then the dendrobium would be a possibility because it's a nice splash of colour. It's not a particularly attractive plant, as nobody's go, but, you know, I'd have that one. And I'd have the um, Lelonia over there. That's all I've got. And neither of those are like shows, oh, well, actually, I've still got the tiny twinkle. If the show was today, <laughs> I could put that in. But I've got so little. And that always is the case in February. I've always got very little. But others seem to have loads and loads and loads. And we normally have a hell of a good show. But, yeah, not this year. We just got away with it last year and had our February show and then everything shut down. <laughs> Literally about a week later, maybe two weeks, our show would have been the last Saturday in February and we locked down sometime in March. So we just got in there, just in time. And the other Orchid Society didn't get in there. So they got, we got locked out there, sort of thing. Anyway, so that's, that's what I've been up to. A lot of computer stuff, a lot of investigating, checking out a lot of reviews and what people say about different bits of kit, finding out what bits of kit are actually available and what sort of price ranges and... You know, who recommends what for what? Because, you know, in, in, an audio interface was just a, just a pair of words to me. I didn't really know what it was for and what you do with it or what it's capable of and all that sort of stuff. But basically, it's, it's, just, it's just a set of inputs and a set of outputs with things like preamps in between that actually allows you to change formats into a USB-style output straight into your laptop and then into some software.
where you can put down the tracks. So if you want lots of separate tracks in your mixer on the laptop, then you just record them individually. But while you're recording track number two, you can play track number one back through your headphones. Yeah? So you're playing along with yourself, and you just keep adding the tracks in. And then on the software, you can mix them, so you can balance the audio level of each track so that no, there's nothing dominating or one bit too loud and all that sort of stuff. It sounds like it's going to be quite fun, but um, it will take a bit of getting used to, obviously. <laughs> you know what I've just noticed? Have a look at that piece of yellow. I'm not going in because the heaters are in the way. I'll zoom in. That yellow flycatcher. What do you think all those splodges are, bearing in mind they're round the back of the flycatcher? They are a little competition for. What do you think they are? Um, there's a cluster of three towards the top, and then one lower down next to a brown splodge. What do you think those blobs are? <laughs> they're not meant to be caught by flycatching paper, <laughs> but they have been. And I'm very pleased they have been, because I can do without them in here. <laughs> Oh, I was only just noticed there. I suspect they're on some of the others as well. Um, they are something I do have to put up with in here. And under normal circumstances, they don't really do much harm. But they can do. It depends on the circumstances. If there's stuff for them, for them to eat, they will get on with it. If there isn't, they'll find something else. That's the way I look at it. And there's something else could be some damage. So, Right, I will see you in tomorrow's chat. And as I said, it's just to let you know I'm, I'm not ill or anything. There's nothing happened. I've just been busy on the computer. And it's just a period when there really isn't much to film. So uh, just this is just like a catch-up video, what I've been up to and stuff. And uh, we'll have a chat tomorrow about something as yet undetermined, as usual. <laughs> we'll get on with that tomorrow. I've got actually, I've actually got an Orchid Society meeting um, this afternoon, a Zoom meeting. So it's our, it's our regular Zoom meeting to replace our normal face-to-face -face meeting that we have. And we've got a speaker. Um, one of the committee members is going to have a chat about some interesting orchids, so I'm sure we'll get some uh, pictures, or we might get the actual orchids held up to the camera, which is something you can do in a Zoom meeting. Um, <laughs> so we shall see. Anyway, I've got that to come this afternoon, and uh, next weekend I've got my, um, my own Zoom presentation to the uh, Central Ohio Orchid Society in the States, which I've got to do at midnight. <laughs> I try not to yawn, <laughs> or try not to yawn on camera anyway. <laughs> That's going to be fun. It's the middle of the night to me. I've normally been in bed sort of at least two hours by that time, sound asleep normally. So I have to make sure I set my alarm and don't fall asleep in the chair. All good fun. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. And just that's what I've been up to is uh, just lots of um, reviews and checking stuff out and things like that. It takes time, you know, and you can't do it continuously. You have to have a break every now and again and just walk away because it starts all buzzing round in your head and you can't make head and a tail of it. You have to just walk away now and again, come back to it or do something different and then come back to it. So uh, anyway, see you tomorrow. Thanks for dropping by. <laughs>